but we are thankful for the word of the Lord tonight. And if you would turn to Romans 8 and verse number 37. Eight and thirty-seven. This is a comfort to us. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor high, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And he says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. There's a witness of God's Spirit in us that we can see God's goodness and others can see God's great power working in us. Brother Mark, would you take us to the Lord in prayer tonight? Amen. I could have touched another scripture that I'm going to touch now, but if you look at Romans 8 and 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Tonight I want to encourage us to realize that God knows what we will face. Before this world was ever framed, before it was ever made, when this world as we know it and humanity as we know humanity and all things that we know in this world, it was a concept, it was an idea in God's mind. And through all the things that we could possibly face when we as God's people incur things, and a lot of people get discouraged, but God has planned for His people to succeed, not to fail. And so I want to encourage us to look at these things tonight. I don't have a complex or perplexing message tonight. I just want us to know that whatever we go through and are going through or will go through, God's already mapped out for those that will trust in His Word and hide that Word in your heart, holding to every promise in the book that is our Word. And if we look at God's Word, the promises of God are yea and amen. So tonight I want us to see we can trust God in everything. When it's out of your hands, it's not out of His. And that's when we have to realize if we are not having the success that God wants us to have in living for Him, it's just because we need to trust in God's Word. We need to pray for strength and power in the Holy Ghost. And some things come about only by prayer and fasting. Today we see so many people, and I'm not against people eating. we got to eat. 
But somewhere you and I have to make a decision in our life that we're going to consecrate, I said consecrate ourselves in prayer and fasting and a time alone to gain strength, a time in God's Word to read God's Word and let our minds digest the truth, the power of God's Word, the truth of His Word. It's all true. God's Word is true tonight. And let God be true and every man a liar. So I'm just saying, if we ever look to God and look at another verse, in 8 and 31, what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? There's so much richness in what Paul has written in all of his writings. He was a man of great intelligence, great knowledge, and great insight in God's Word. God wrote, holy men of old wrote as they were moved on by the Holy Ghost. Paul wrote over half the New Testament. And yet if you would have looked at him because of the way his lifestyle prior to living for God, you would have wondered how in the world did God ever use such a man. How did this man ever come to God? But he did. And he said he was the chiefest of sinners. Now whether he was or not, if he wasn't, he was lying. But I don't believe it would be in the book if he was lying. But people can be rascals, but God can save them. Our world is full of rascals. Our world is full of people that many of them are reprobate concerning the truth and the faith of God's Word. But they're not reprobate to a point, many of them are not to a point that they have rejected God so long that He has rejected them. But there are some that have, but most are not. I'm just telling God's people, if we've ever prayed for a vision, prayed for a desire to see people come to the Lord, time is wrapping up soon. The longer that a person lives in sin, oftentimes the greater the likelihood that they'll never come to God. If we've ever prayed for an outpouring of God's Spirit. If we've ever prayed for the conviction, power of God's Spirit to get a hold of people like it was with Paul, God got a hold of him and caused that man to be blinded, but yet to be able to see spiritually. Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. It's hard to go against the Word of God. It's hard to go against the Spirit of God. It's hard because God's going to put some things there that will slow people down, that will cause pain in them as they go against His Word. So I'm just saying to God's people tonight, if we've ever prayed for people tonight, if we've ever been intercessors for people tonight, I don't care how hard their heart is, Paul was converted to the Lord. And God smote him with blindness. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus Christ whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the bricks. 
It's hard to go against the things that God has set in place to stop people from being as resistive to his will, that they realize that there is a pain, there are things to suffer from going against God's word. And so we preach the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, the salvation of God, the blessings of God and healing of body, soul, and spirit. There's many manifold blessings of God that we look at. And we have to believe that God is able to change hearts. He's able to change people and he's able to keep people. We often say, people ask you, why are there backsliders? If God is so good, why are there so many backsliders? Because when God is out of focus, when God's out of mind, that's why we need to be continually in God's Word, praying to God, coming to church, being involved in things. And that's how we can keep living for God and stay motivated. Verse 35 of Romans 8, it says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. And then, then it goes on and says, that it, As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep before the slaughter. Yea, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's all complex. Persecution, opposition, all kinds of things that come against God's people. If we hold on to God and let Him hold to us through the empowerment of the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. These are the things that's going to keep us in a time like we haven't seen. Church, when I first got in God's church. I didn't just join in, I was born in. And as we're born of the water and the Spirit, we repent, we're baptized in Jesus' name, and we receive the Holy Ghost. I repented first with a will willingness to receive the Holy Ghost, to be baptized in water which I got the Holy Ghost first and was baptized later in Jesus' name. I had a willingness to be baptized in water in Jesus' name. All of this is a part of the born-again experience. And without it, we can't make it. There's not enough human willpower in us to successfully obey God and have his approval of the life we live, but if the Spirit that dwelt in Christ dwell in us, it will quicken also our mortal body. I'm talking about a lot of things that we have to look at like Paul is addressing. We've got to have God's Spirit, and with God's Spirit we can do all things. We can accomplish what God wants us to do and be like Paul said, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him 
that loves us. That we really love God. That's why sometimes there are things in life that can get in our way of living for God. If there's any failure in living for God, if there's any failure in lack of success and ultimately being saved by hearing God say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joys of the Lord forever. If there's any failure for us to hear God say that, it's not God's fault. I'm just preaching about implementing everything, every aspect of God's Word, God's Spirit, linked with our desire. And we have to pray. We know things about living for God. But finding a place. Today altars are barren. So many churches today don't even have an altar. They maybe have steps and people come and kneel at steps. Now I'm not saying there's any material difference in praying that one or the other, an altar that is a true altar or a incorporated steps or whatever, wherever people pray. I don't care whether you're standing, kneeling, or laying. The fact of being able to give ourselves to God, to trust in what God has provided, to desire and ask God for those things that we've got to have to live for Him. And we cannot know those things unless we get into the book. We have to look at all these things. We have to see what God has said that He would do for us. And Paul was saying, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Through all the persecution, through all the opposition, and we as a church, and we as God's people that comprise the totality of the church, and we that are just looking at ourselves when oftentimes when we part from the church. Oftentimes, if you're married, you have your spouse, if you're single, you may not have anybody with you, but God is always with every one. Our strength is more in God. Our success in living for God is more than so somebody just saying, hey, you don't need to do that. We need enough power of God in our life, in our relationship. And more than just the Word telling us, the Word will tell us what we need to do and what we need not to do. But it's the power of God's Spirit indwelling, empowering, quickening us in living and being and doing. In Him we live, we move, and we have our being. God's people have got to realize. Now I'm trying not to make this complex. Paul made it where it seemed a lot of complexity. You just have to really study it. Now what is he saying? You could preach a long time on any one scripture. But I'm just telling God's people tonight. We are facing a lot of things in everyday life. And when we are out of connection with a lot of things of the world, we don't seem to realize all the pressure that's exerted on the world. People that have to work every day in this world and be around people. Oftentimes it's the people that, if you're in a forced relationship, sort of, uh, is that what you could call it in this workaday world? But 
we find today people that are exposed to media in whatever manner and measure that is. You will find that there's a continual bombardment of the mind. Mine eye affected my heart, Paul said. So we have to realize, is that right or was that David? I think it, David, David. All these people, all they're saying, there's so many to remember it come to me then. Oh, that's David. Mine eye affected, affected, affects my heart. It affected and is affecting and will affect our heart. Nothing has changed about the perception of things that we see and things that influence. That's why we must be cautious as to what we allow into our lives. We have to have great discretion. If the word conflicts with what we think, what we say, what we do, we have to regard God's word because it is forever settled in heaven and in earth. So I trust today that we will realize God is able to keep us. As verse 35 says of Romans 8, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? We don't have to be separated. The stronger we are in God, as we build up our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. As we allow God's Spirit, we have to be, we are saved by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. We have to be renewed. God, renew in me a right mind, a right spirit. God renew in me a hunger, a desire for your word, for the fellowship of your people, for the influence of the functionality of the church that has come together in the name of Jesus to worship him in spirit and truth to fellowship with God, not just hearing about the Lord, but singing to the Lord. Like I will run to you as we were singing that song tonight. To your words of truth. We've got to reach for this. There's a lot of things that people are hungering for in this day and time. And many people, even God's people, if you want to stay a part of God's kingdom, if you want to stay on fire for God, you've got to limit your exposure to things that are okay in themselves. But you can overdo anything our overindulgence in the pleasures of life, in the things of this world, the things of these wor this world that so many people are involved with. Let me say it in a clarification statement. It's possible that we can have so many toys, big boy and big girl toys, that we are involved with, that attract, distract, to the point of retracting us, away from God, from where we are. And we got to count it all loss, that we may win Christ, that we may win in Christ. We've got to have Him, we've got to hold on to Him, 
and realize sometimes there's things that are causing God's people failure in living for God. There's too many attractions and distractions of things in this world that are keeping God's people preoccupied where they're not seeking the Lord. When you're full of God, your vision, your perception of things is different. The more of God's Spirit that indwells in us or is activated, we got to be full of the Holy Ghost so there might be a partiality of the filling of God. But it talks about various ones and Paul being full of the Holy Ghost, Peter being full of the Holy Ghost. The more of God consciousness through the indwelling and empowering of God's Spirit, the more we will see things God's way. And so I'm encouraging us tonight to look at these things. This is something that we have to do on a daily basis. We are saved by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Did I quote it? I'm telling God's people, there's so many things today that are geared by Satan to steal your time, your talent, and your treasure. And that ultimately would steal your relationship with God. So we, we hold together. That's why we pray for one another. Not only do we pray for somebody in their physical condition, we pray for people in their God relation position in relation with Him. And if we've ever prayed for one another, if we've ever interceded for one another, we need to do this this day and time. And not just the ones in our local fellowship. God's people across this globe in some other countries are facing some of the most harsh living conditions, some of the most harsh conditions of persecution, and it's easy when you're feeling pain to back away from something. But we don't need to back away from God. We need to draw an eye to God that He'll draw an eye to us. That's another message in itself. The initiative is on our part to draw an eye to God. But God's strength is made perfect in the time of our weakness. Many people are weak today. Many people have fellowship with so much of this world that are God's people. That's the danger of living in a modern day society. There are so many attractions and distractions it will result in retraction of God's people away from Him. And so I'm just encouraging us today that we would continually grow closer to God and cash in, if, if that's all right to say that, cashing in, but not, we're not cashing in but we're trying to take advantage of obtaining the things that God wants us to have. If we've ever prayed for a spiritual appetite in a non-spiritual world, this is what we need to do today. We need fellowship with one another. We need to fellowship with people that want to live for God and that's what we need to do, people that have like passions and desires like we have. But yet you cannot eliminate yourself from trying to help somebody, either or spiritual, restore such a one. Talking about somebody 
that's falling or fall on, restore such a one considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Temptation is great today. And that's why Paul wrote things like he wrote. Because he saw the condition of people in his day. And he said that he was the chiefest of sinners before he came to the Lord. The danger of anybody backsliding, whatever attracted you, distracted you, and caused you to be a failure as you were before you came to God. If you backslide and you lose out of the indwelling and filling of God's Spirit, and I know I'm saying a lot of complexity of things like Paul was saying, but the Holy Ghost is what keeps us at attention. It's what really causes us to be able to discern between right and wrong, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We've got to see today God's Spirit is our key to our perception of what really is going on in our world. The human eyes don't always discern things. The human mind wants to justify the condemned things and reject the blessed things in God. So I'm just saying, our success in living for God is staying in God's Word more, praying for one another more, praying for ourselves, and praying for others. We are, and this is another message in itself, am I my brother's keeper? You better believe you are. We must be about seeing people, praying for them, encouraging them, not condemning them. This is one problem that I have seen in the time that I have been in church, and it's been a long time, a long time. I've had the Holy Ghost 50 one years. I believe that's right. No, I might better count. I better count that up. Sixty-five, forty-one years. I better count my fingers and toes and see. Oh, and <laughs> forty-one years, church. Is that right? Let me see. Wait a minute. Wait. No, oh, fifty-one. It is fifty-one. I'll be sixty-five next month. A long time living for God. And I want to honest to God say, I never had a desire to go back to the weak and beggarly things of the world. The world is not your friend. The world cares for its own. But notice what we're not all this world. Our mind, we're, even though we're living here and we're real people, our hearts and affections are set on things above and not below. My time has gone so fast. I look at all the things that Paul began to talk about here. And we look at it and we realize that we have to have God. We have to look at all the things that people face. We ought to see examples. We ought to look at Look at examples of somebody that is living for God. Don't let somebody be your example. Don't look at the person 
that's doing the worst in living for God. Look at somebody that's being successful. We do look at people, but remember the number one example is Jesus Christ. People are going to fail. They're going to fall. We pray for them. We don't need to grind them in the ground. We need to, ye that are spiritual, restore such a one considering yourselves, lest you also be tempted. Can we stand tonight? But I, I just want to encourage us tonight, as I've tried to do. Live for the Lord in spite of what others do. Don't look at others' failures and justify, well, they're doing it, I guess it's all right for me. It's not. It is not. And I ask you tonight, let's pray for a harvest of souls for people to come in to this kingdom of God. I heard a preacher tonight, and that's not, or this evening, that's not the basis of me preaching this, but this preacher was even saying uh, that baptism, uh, he, was, he was diminishing the part of salvation that includes water baptism. And I was so disappointed. And I won't go into all that, but I'm telling you, the Bible says we have to repent. We have to be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. If you're not baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins, your sins are still with you. And there is not power in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Those are titles. There is power to remit sin only in the name of Jesus Christ. So it's essential that people be baptized in Jesus' name, receive the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in tongues. It was from the beginning with the early church. It has not changed. And so we got to live a holy life and continue. It, Paul told us uh, that we'd be saved if we continued in the things that we had both seen in him and learned. So we're learning. We're retaining. And I'm stirring up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Brother Michael Wayne, would you take us to the Lord in dismissal tonight?